Hey, it's Chris. I was looking for a way to use external batteries with some of the Ryobi tools like the new 800 watt inverter. So I decided to design and build a extension cord that goes from a, one or more batteries to a particular Ryobi device. For people with other brand 18 volt systems, you could use your batteries with Ryobi tools. I've got my battery adapter on a nine amp hour battery and then our new adapter that plugs in the back of Ryobi tools. So now I can just turn on the inverter using an external battery. A lot of people ask me how I go about designing these different parts for that I do. So I thought I'd show you. I recently picked up an inexpensive RevoPoint Pop 3D scanner. This makes reverse engineering parts a little bit easier. I'm going to go over the scanning and the 3D CAD modeling. If you're more interested in the assembly, just jump back to the end. Because the part was black and shiny in some areas, I'm using a spot check developer to put a fine white coat on. For small parts, you basically just throw the part on the turntable, start the software, and it turns around and scans the part. The scanner takes a lot of different views as the turntable rotates, and it uses the little white dots as a way to connect the, each scan together to make a complete part. After the part rotates all the way around, you stop the scan and then you start processing it. The first thing the software does is take all the points from all the different scans and combines them into a single point cloud. The next step is for the software to take the point cloud and convert it into a polygonal surface. Once that's done, you can save the file out as a stereolithography file or an STL file that most common CAD programs can read. The first thing I do is I load in the mesh file and I look at the different regions of it so you can tell it to find out what are planes and other things. And I use this to define the coordinate system so that, and I line it up with that. I sketch out the area that I'm interested in, which is this piece here. Because the scan quality is not great because of the limited lim resolution, I use a set of calipers to go and I measure things and then put in the dimensions so that I know it's the more accurate. Moving forward, I extrude that one sketch I did to make the first piece. Then I sketch the next area of interest and I extrude that. I slowly add detail to the model like this little outcropping. So I sketch it here and I extrude it out and I check the dimension with the calipers. I add fillets along the edge and along here to give it strength. I'm adding the cutouts up in the top where the terminals plus and minus and the temperature sensor go. I sketch in the little guide bumps that are on the bottom of the piece. I round them with fillets. Now I sketch out the area where the, the battery locks are going to go.
Now I'm pretty much done with the mesh and now I'm going to start adding features that I need to make the part that I'm interested in. And I'm going to put some uh, nickel strips in here and I want to have some place to, to embed the end so I'm going to put in some slots. Here I'm defining some slots that are going to go all the way through the part that I can slide the nickel strips in. So here you can see I cut them out. Go all the way to the bottom. I want to define an area where I can make latches that go out the side so I'm making a cover for it. I've extruded those sections out now, so now there's a spot underneath here. You can see here. Next, I want to define an area for the two wires that are going to go in and be soldered to the nickel strip. I want to add some markers that tell which side is plus and which side is minus. Cut those out. I want to make some tabs that slide in here so I'm defining the size of them and I've extruded it this direction. Now I'm defining the next piece that's going to go up this way. I'm going to put a fillet in here for strength. And I want to define a cutout that will hold the spring. it out here. Finally I'm going to take a stab at making a spring. So I've got it sketched here. I'm going to try to do it with little S turns. I'm guessing at how thick to make them. So I'm going to try to print these in both petchy and in a rubber material and see which one works better. I loaded the STL models into the Prusa slicer then we can send them to the printer. They sell these pure metal uh, nickel strips that you use for making lithium iron battery packs. I'm going to use that as the contact in the battery so the model has a very small slit here and a space so I can solder a wire onto it. And then I'll fold it over and I, there's a little space to tuck in the end here. For battery wire I'm going to use this 10 gauge um, silicon wire. It's braided copper. It's very nice. I've bent the piece of nickel in half and I left a little more space on one end and I'm just going to solder this wire to it. I've got the wire soldered onto the nickel strip and I'm just going to insert it in here. It comes out this side. I've put a little bend in the tips of each of the strips. And next I'm going to pull the wire back and insert those into the slot. I'm going to mix up some five minute epoxy 
I'm gonna put some in the slot underneath here and in the track. Then I'll pull the wires back and insert these little foldovers in the slot. Now that the glue has dried on the wires, we're going to insert the locking tabs. So these tabs slide in. And then I 3D printed this little rubber spring. And that just fits in here. It's a little hard to see because I printed it in black. But now as you squeeze the tabs, the rubber spring compresses and the two indentations that lock into the Ryobi tool go back out. In a previous video, I showed you how to make these adapter caps that allow you to connect to a Ryobi battery. This has two standard tabs, so we just need to crimp on some connectors and then we can connect the wires to the adapter. Just put that on and So you squeeze these tabs and you insert it. And now the tool is locked in here. And this is the 800 watt power inverter. So now I can run it on one or more external batteries. Well, I hope this information was useful for you. If it was, please hit like and subscribe. I'll put the 3D models on the Perusa and Thingiverse websites. I'll put all the parts I used in the video description. Have a great day.